Peace be with you and welcome to Community Conversations. My name is Chaplain Zahir Manan. I'm uh, the Outreach Director for the Ahmadi Muslim Community, Bath al House of Peace Mosque in Meriden. I'm sitting here with my good friend and brother, Ted Hakey Jr. Introduce yourself. How you doing today, Zahir? I'm Ted Hakey Jr., originally from Shelton, moved to Meriden, was there for around 15 years, and now I'm back in Shelton again. What do you do for a living? I work for a key dealership. Oh, that's cool. So if we're looking for a car, we know where to go. <laughs> yeah. you know? Everybody uh, basically knows our story, and it's gotten out in the news, and people have read about us. W what would you say is the take-home lesson from our story? Well, right from the beginning, I always said, you know, five minutes was my thing. I always said, if I had spent five minutes, knocked on the door, your door, found out who you were, what you were all about, and what you weren't about, it would have made all the difference in the world. So what do you mean by w weren't about? I weren't about terrorism. Exactly. <laughs> go right to it, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, it was. Um, I didn't know. You know, I, was, I lived the greatest squad. Lived next door to, to the mosque for, you know, ten years, and I didn't really know anything about Islam or what was going on in there, and and I just I thought the worst. And why? Was it was it just because of the obviously? I mean, what most people read about in press and media. Um, I myself, uh, many times, am thinking that. Um, what are people thinking about us? You right. know? Was that the major... No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, one attack after another, and then you just start to think that, you know, that, that that's what Muslims do. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, it's just, it was wrong, but that's just, you know, that was the opinion I formed. Right, right. So you're saying that um, is it good for people to come out of their comfort zone and go meet people that they don't really know anything absolutely. about? Absolutely. Okay. That's how a lot of... Our conversations began in our mosque as well. Like you know, Tom, uh, our you know our good friend, and that's how that started. Um, even though he was kind of told not to come back to the other mosques, um, <laughs> he was more than welcome in our mosque. With the climate today, with the number of immigrants that are coming in and um, all that, do you think that it's a valid concern for people? Uh, you know about uh, you know uh, that we shouldn't let immigrants in or that we should let them in based on what they hear in the news about about the Middle East. That's a tough question, um, really tough. Um, obviously, they need. I think they need vetting. Yeah, yeah. You need oh, to yeah. know where they're coming from, and I, I so I spoke to a few people, and you know, a friend of mine had broke it down for me, and he had said. You know, when, when he was he was a Marine in Iraq, and he said when he was there, he had mentioned, well, what if I went out in town right now in, in my civilian clothes, what would happen? And, this is, and they said, well, you know, the people would kill you. And he said, okay, so if they're going to kill me, why do I want them same people coming to live with me here? These aren't, you know, terrorist groups. These aren't, you know, Hamas. These aren't Al-Qaeda. These are the normal people, and they're going to kill me. So why do I want them coming here? That was, that was a tough one. I was like, oh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because Connecticut's still one of the only states that's allowing immigrants in. And I know that the American government has a vigorous vetting system already. I remember they wanted to monitor mosques, uh, you know, in Europe and things like that. Mm. What, do you, what do you think about that? You think that's a good idea? No, of course not. Because, not, because it, sometimes the government can go too far with that. I, I feel that after knowing you, I think you're going to self-monitor and I, I think our best bet would be to befriend Muslim people and not, not make them an enemy and then let them know, you know, if you want to come here and worship in our country and, you know, do the things that, that, like what you and your family do, you work hard, you have your family, then nobody's against that. And if you come here for other reasons, you want, you know, want to force everybody else to change and things like that, that's what people are afraid about. Right, exactly. I mean... Uh, honestly, you know, our, our religious leader, the Khalifa, you know, I know you know a little bit about him. Um, he's the fifth successor of the Messiah, and he actually said, um, bring it on, because, uh, because we have nothing to hide. And, and, and that's the thing, is that what, what did you notice was a difference between the, did you notice at all, uh, uh, is there any difference between the Amdi community and the other Muslims? Well, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's night and day. In, in what terms? Well, the thing I learned the most, because before I knew nothing about one sect of Muslims from another, and now I kind of know a lot more about it, and I'm, I'm surprised at the amount of infighting between them. 
and it seems like they all don't like you guys. And <laughs> for what? I, I look at your history and everything else, and I'm like, these guys don't do anything bad. And I don't know why the Sunnis are against you, the Shias are against you. They're all against you. And I'm like, why? Well, yeah, you know, technically we're, we're Sunni, right? Yeah, in action, there's no difference, really, except that, of course, you know, with, with prayers, with the five pillars and the beliefs, we're, we have the same core values. But, yeah, with our actions, you can see the difference that we're, we're peace-loving, we're interfaith-promoting, you know, we're community-building. Um, and you would wonder why, especially in a society in America where, you know, it's based on religious freedom. But I think the main reason is that we believe that the Messiah has come, right? Although all Muslims believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the Messiah, they, most Muslims believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last prophet, so that no prophet can come after him. Yet, um, they also believe that Jesus is coming again. We simply believe that he has already come in the, in the person of I mean, Hazrat Mizr Allah Muhammad, right, who was a founder of our community. That's one of the reasons why they declare us non-Muslims as heretical, right? Um, but yeah, the infighting is there even between non amdis I mean, the target, who is the target of the terrorists? Of the, uh, the so-called Muslims that are terrorizing, 95% of their target are other Muslims, you know? Right. You know, what I always say is that what, what is the situation in the Middle East? Uh, uh, what is the situation in Syria? You know, have you, um, have you read about or, or heard anything going on in Yemen or, or Syria or anything? Very little. Very little? Okay. It doesn't get much attention. That's really important. Why do you think that? I don't know. I, I it just it, it seems like it's so far away and it's not our problem kind of in this country. It's just kind of, but I know there's some really horrific things going on, but it's, it doesn't get any attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, I mean, every, every, religion, every p gr group of people, uh, we tend to be tribal and fighting one another. Uh, that's what baffled me as well, is that growing up in America, um, you know, my parents would tell me that we're severely persecuted in Pakistan, you know, and, um, and I would say, well, why? Our Messiah said, don't fight with the sword. And he said, be peaceful, be loving, come together. Um, the only thing that um, he would uh, talk about is how how we can come together on a common platform and he would call out how other ideologies are um kind of contradictory not the people you know because it the the source of the people's actions are their ideologies right that's why truesam.com is aimed to counter extremist ideology right that's where you start right um so um but i mean we've seen here in america there have been what um, since since the new year, we're only 20, what, 26, 27 days into January, there have been 11 mass shootings, you know, um, uh, like the one that happened in Kentucky and stuff, which, which is, what you see is a human problem. It's not any demographic, right? It's not any religion. Mm -hmm. It's people are like this. So um, it's better for people to kind of come together who are from differing backgrounds, right? What advice would you give people that are... Like, oh, you know, I don't want to step into a mosque, or I don't want to step into a synagogue, or, you know, I, I just want to keep separate from them. Do you think that's a good idea, or do you, do you think they should try to go on public platform? What, what do you think? No, I, would, I would say knock on the door and, and just meet and greet, sit down, break bread, and, and find out. Right. See if your beliefs are true. Because yeah. mine weren't. Oh, I had many misconceptions, and you know, right away I saw that you were doing more to fight ISIS and fight terrorist groups than, than any, any, anybody groups that I was in were doing. You were doing you know, these active things that you do, and I had, didn't, that I didn't expect. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's also a lot of things I learned about you, you and your community and what you have done and how you served our country. Um, so, yeah, coming together on a platform is educational for all parties, right? Because then, you know, I get to also learn about your background, where you're coming from, um, your your religion, um, your viewpoints on things, and many times we don't agree on something, but we still are 
the best of friends. You know, it, it doesn't stop our relationship as human beings, right? One of those things could be politics that we disagree on, right? Yep. Certain figures or, um, you know, uh, policies or whatever, or whatever it is, even religions, you know, that you have your religion, I have my religion, but um, we find a way to make it work. That's where I think most people are, I think, shy or mm -hmm. just don't want to step into that because they live in their, some people live in their bubbles. And some people fr from every community, not just, you know, um, singling out one or two communities, but they live in their bubble. And um, it's, yeah, it's good for them to come out. And sometimes it's your own kids that take <laughs> you out, right? Right. You know, I remember we used to um, talk a lot about, um, like, exp like r uh, spiritual experiences, like in dreams and things like that. Do you think that... Um, dreams could be a form of guidance for people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Have, have you ever had a dream that you think guided you to a decision or something in your life or change your perspective on anything? Hmm. Tough question. I usually don't remember them. Right, right, right. But right. I remember you were telling me some experiences that you had um, yeah. where, you know, you, you would pray and you felt like you know, like an answer would come um, just just on your connection, basically saying that um, you know sp spirituality, although it's not palpable, it's something that mm -hmm. is transcendent, right, and something that can help us um, look past our differences, right. It doesn't matter what you call it, right, right. Or, or what religion it is or what you call God or um, how you believe in God. It's something that transcends our bodies, our, our, our minds, our hearts, our worldly engagements, mm -hmm. right? Um, and at least we can start on that level. One thing I noticed when you would invite us to your house is that um, you have a connection with animals, which immediately changed my perspective on you, um, the way you feed them. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Mm, I feel all, all, all kinds of stuff. There's cardinals, hawks, deer, possum. Anything that comes in the yard pretty much gets fed. So why do you, why do, you do that? And, and what motivated you or inspired you to do that? Just from a, a kid, I always liked the animals. And then I, I put one day a, a hawk landed on the, on the porch right next to the bird feeder. Just randomly landed? Yeah, and he was after a bird. Oh, oh okay. Food where he didn't get it. Okay. So... I looked in the fridge and there was some pork roast in there and I put it out and he grabbed, he wound up flying back down grabbing it and ate it. So then the next day I put more out and that was 15 years ago and they come almost every day. Wow. It might even be second generation, third generation. Third, they bring the babies, they, you know, they, they'll be the, the male, the female, then they bring the little one. I mean, well, you've seen all the videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, you take like professional videos <laughs> on your <laughs> iPhone, man. They're like National Geographic. It's tough to get because you can't really aim it. You just gotta, gotta, Okay, what I get, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I never noticed they come that. In, okay, they come in so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've done so many of them, and I just kind of got it down. Oh, yeah. The, no, that's, I mean, you know, there's a tradition that the Islamic prophet, peace be upon him, says that for every animal you feed, or, or even if you feed one animal, um, that can be the means of, um, you know, forgiveness of your whole past, you know? And it's that, that's why I try to do the same thing. You know, like when cats used to come to my parents' yeah. house, you know, just stray cats, yeah. you know, because they live in the woods. <laughs> um, and it's literally hunting ground. And you see cats, peacocks, um, deer, and things like that. And the cats w don't shy from coming up to the door. So we would, you know, give it like leftover chicken or the chicken's skin that we would skin off and all that. And, you know, my dad used to tell us that um, every time you guys do that, you get a blessing. A sin is wiped out, and you get a blessing. In fact, there was a, in a hadith, there was a murderer who murdered like 99 people or something, and uh, he saw a thirsty dog, fed it, and uh, it said that his sins were forgiven just because he fed that dog. So I know it's a noble thing, and that's why it really affected mm -hmm. me that I was like, you know, this guy is uh, a loving, caring, uh, gentle guy, you know. And, um, and, and you know, of course, our mindset what I had thought about you was changed even in that action because, you know, I'm a human being too. You know, I don't have all the right thoughts 
and all the right um, understandings. But I, you know, I try not to judge people, right? You know, you know yeah. we try. But um, it's only when you get to know the person, when you invite them, have to exactly mm -hmm. what you said, break bread with them, that you get to see um, in their actions who they are. And that, and that really affected me. And I still have that nice knife that you gave me, that hunting knife. The K-bar. Yeah, the K-bar. Yeah, exactly. Um, I pronounce it cover for some reason. Because <laughs> I think it sounds like, you know, uh, cover in Arabic can mean great, you know. <laughs> so, um, so you know, I'm, I'm still doing a little bit of my archery and still doing, you know, um, of course not, not hunting because you need a license for that. But what are some of your other hobbies that you're doing these days? Well, it's just a lot of work. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a lot of work, and you know, actually, I've been starting now looking for Indian arrowheads. Oh yeah, I haven't found one yet, but I know a few different spots and where to look and stuff by the river and stuff. And I have, I have some relatives that have, have found quite a, quite a, quite a few of them. So, w what intrigues you about the Native American heritage? Just, uh, I'm not really sure. Just family, you know. Families always, always you know, it's. You know, a lot of my, my aunts in New Hampshire, so I was just always had like a, in her room. She always had a bunch of stuff in there, different Native American things. So, so some always interests me. Yeah, you know, I you know the book that you gave me about the Native Americans. Uh, you know that nice historical book. Mm -hmm. You know it, what what intrigued me about that is that the religion that they say that they follow is called you know shamanism. Mm -hmm. You know, right? And they um, uh, that's a religion that's actually traced back to Mongolia, you know, Mo Mughals like Genghis Khan and all that, their religion was shamanism. So, uh, you know, I, I started connecting them because they have very similar practices. They uh, go about in teepees. They're very natural. They don't destroy their environment, uh, you know, setting aside Genghis Khan. But, you know, <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah. but, you know, actually he was, a, he was a religious guy. You know, he was spiritual and he would pray to that um, great spirit. And he created one of the largest empires known to history, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, th although he, he was barbaric in some ways and destructive, obviously, but he's the reason why a lot of Turks and Mongols came into India. And those Mongols that were there and they became Muslim, they're the ones that created the architecture for the mosques. You know, like the domes and the, um, the beautiful architecture, like the, you know, the... Um, Shah Jahan's temple, uh, uh, Taj Mahal, in India, those were Mongols that created that. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, Sh Shah Jahan was a Mongol, and and he could, you know that architecture and that art, that art side. So, th you know, that's what I notice about the Native Americans as well is that they're very um, holistic, very natural, and that's the way I see that mm -hmm. the Prophet Muhammad was. Peace be upon him. And he would go to the mountains. Um, he wouldn't have a lavish house. His house was very small, um, and. Uh, uh, he wasn't about destruction of his environment. He was about working with the nature, not against it, like we're doing today. You know what? You know what? What are your views about that? Do you believe in global warming, or do you think that we're uh, we're contributing to it, um, or or you know? I'm not. I'm not sure because there's just so many. There's so much information you get, and then this side says this, and then that side says that, and then they prove them wrong. It's just. I mean, some things are pretty obvious, you know. You know, seeing the emissions that we're doing and all the pollution that's going on, I mean, I, I, I can safely think that um, we might be adding to it, whatever it is. But the world has gone through, you know, freezing and, and warm cycles. Mm -hmm. but, um, but we're definitely not working with nature. Um, we, we tend to uh, blow it up before we we construct something right. and um, my way of living would be and this is just a personal thing but my way of living would be within the nature you know I wish I could have like one of those tree houses that they have on like HD TV you know <laughs> yeah. like one of those things the reason I asked about dreams and stuff is because even the Native Americans every religion like Joseph in the Bible you know his whole story revolves around a dream and we as Muslims believe that dreams can be a form of communication from the divine right and that, you know, you can get some guidance from it. It can show you um, future events or help you make a decision. Many of the inventions 
that scientists came up with were shown to them in dreams and things. And mm. if we just pay attention a little bit more, then I think we might be um, be able to connect more better with the divine. Because in the Quran it says that, call upon me and I will answer your prayers, whatever way you pray. Mm. You know, The biggest thing that I see right now is that the world is kind of headed or already engaged in another world war. The last thing that I would say that I would want people to come away from is that it's not Islam versus the West or one demographic w versus another. Wars have been going on. And, you know, from your background, because you seem really intelligent about um, this subject, you know, what do you, what do you think is the reason for the fighting that humanity has been doing for a long time? I think... If you look back, even you know, from history, the first family, you know, Cain and Abel, killed his brother. So, Thank you. So yeah. it didn't take long. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So why did Cain kill Abel? I mean, it was it was over. I kind of forget the story, but something competitive, right? Yeah. So they, right? Or he was jealous. Was he jealous? Right. So he was jealous of his father's attention. That's why I think that's what. It was. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 you can see that with Joseph's brother too. It was when they both made a sacrifice, and Abel's was accepted, and his wasn't. Right. And he got jealous. Joseph's story is the same thing. He had ten brothers, and they threw him down the well because right. Jacob loved him the most. Jesus, peace be upon him, it was his own people that crucified him. Right? With Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his biggest enemies, his worst enemies were his paternal uncles. Wow. Yeah. And it's always people that come with a message of justice, of peace. They're not competitive in their way. Uh, you know, they're, they're just doing their thing. They're, they're trying to make society right. Um, and then um, there's always an opposing force, like, why are you doing this? Why are you introducing this? Or just out of your knowledge, because, you, you know, I've heard you talk about this before, and you're pretty um, meticulous and, and, and uh, thoughtful about these kind of things. Because I think it's important to talk about, because so many lives are being lost, you know, in the Middle East, here in America, and all over the world. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about in the group discussion before was the rise in population as one of the problems. What do you think? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely... So so what in the rise in population? It just seems like the more people, there's going to be more problems. You know? Yeah. And so what do, you, what do you think can be a solution? You know, I know we talked about people getting to know one another and all that kind of stuff, but what, what do you see as the core, um, you know, problem to this? Well, it's people not respecting other people's views. You know, if, if, they, if they're different, then automatically they don't like them and want to kill them. And it's like, whoa, you know. Yeah. It's just, and you can have different beliefs and still get along. And then if you really sit down, you're going to find out that your beliefs really aren't so much different after all. Does, uh, how much uncomfortability is it to go to a, to a place that's outside of your setting that you've never been before? Like... Uh, like that takes a lot of bravery, you know, especially when all you hear is negative things, you know. Mm -hmm. So it takes a certain amount of bravery. It's something that people have to overcome themselves, right? Because mm -hmm. there are neutral ro locations, but many times people um, invite to their places and they want to show them how they are, right. you know, like be transparent, basically. I understand it, and, and, and our Khalifa has been saying, our Messiah said it, the prophets of the old sa said it as well that the foundation should be justice, you know, they treat others as you want them to treat you. Then the next step is kindness, being kind, and uh, then the last step is treating others like they're your kith and kin, because in reality, we're related, uh, scripturally, spiritually, but also biologically, right? Mm -hmm. Don't we come from a common ancestor, right? Um, trace it back far enough, right? Right? Like, like I read somewhere that there's this 1.2 million uh, year old skeleton that they found in Africa that a woman, a female, that we can all be traced back to. So it kind of makes you think, it kind of makes you wonder that um, it's kind of like sibling rivalry, right. right? It's on a m magnified scale, and it's because of the injustices, right? That you're saying people don't respect each other, right. and they believe that their way is the only way or that 
they need to impose their ways to to fix other yeah, people, I mean. right? I mean, the start definitely is coming together on common platforms and just having a dialogue. And it doesn't have to be about religion. It doesn't have to be about politics. You can just talk about what makes you human, you know? And just uh, when you invited us to your house and we saw those actions, it was... It was heartwarming for me because it was like I've never seen that. I'm honestly I've never seen that just casually at the backyard of somebody who's feeding an eagle, you know, or feeding a hawk, you know. <laughs> um, and it was pretty majestic, you know. It reminded me of the story of Elijah, <laughs> the prophet, right? Remember? Yeah. I told you about yeah. that. So, um, you know, is there is there any uh, last uh, uh, advice or anything that you would want to say to the viewers? Well, like I said, the thing came down to five minutes. It doesn't take that long to meet and greet people and sit down, break some bread, and just find the common ground. It's a lot easier than you think. Yeah, yeah. And, and definitely opening up your house and your family and having them meet each other shows that there's no hostility uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that you're exposing your life to other people. So And that wins hearts um, more than... Uh, anything so the education is important uh, that's what I understand and um, the love you know uh, love for all hatred for none and practicing that and not just saying it as we have done and as so many people have gotten affected by us right how many messages did you get from around the yeah, world quite a bit <laughs> right and like what were some of those messages well just thanking me for the apology and you know for taking the time to learn that, that Islam was not evil and for bringing your friends to our mosque, yeah. for uh, defending us when there was nobody to defend us uh, on, on social media, um, just showing people that these are humans too, you know, um, uh, and it's understandable where the um, rhetoric is coming from, mm. but you're helping to dispel that rhetoric. Well, there's so much mystery, that's what it is. There's so much mystery to mystery. Islam, it just seems like it's just, it always seems so closed off, and, and, and that's what it is, we don't really... And most Americans just have no idea. Right, right, right. So, and that's also a lesson for us to um, come to get to know people by serving the communities, getting together with everybody, and uh, introducing ourselves. So, mm. um, thank you for joining me, uh, my friend and my brother. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you all for uh, joining us for this community conversation. And peace be with you.